The first time I ever performed in front of an audience was at my church. I was in children's choir and we performed Noah's Ark or something like that. I was a lion and I had my face, the face part on right, but my costume was turned around backwards and the tail, I was like moving like this and my tail was swaying right in front and everybody was laughing. But I didn't like even get upset or anything. I thought it was funny. So I was like, whoa, my tail is swinging in front of me. The first time I realized I wanted to be a professional singer, performer, is um, my seventh grade choir teacher. We, she had, during our concert, we could do solos. And I was like, and she asked me if I wanted to do a solo. She advised me to, and I was like, oh, okay. So I did Vision of Love by Mariah Carey. And I was just so, like people would come up to me afterwards and were like, you know, I was really touched by that, you know, performance. And that kind of is like, you know, I didn't really think of it that way that you could probably touch lives with this kind of, I thought, it would, you know, you just get up there and performed and it was just, you were talented at something. But um, that's when I realized that I, I wanted to really, that's how I would make a difference, I guess, in the world is just sing and do what I'm, I'm best at, so. After performing on American Idol, I've been getting so much feedback, much more than just my little town. Um, they tell me, you know, I really like that song, or, and actually people are brutally honest, like my friends and stuff, which I love. I beg them to be my worst, you know, critics, because whenever I perform, people are going to do that too. So, you know, I beg them to tell me, but they're, like my friend Matt was like, well, he's like, you did a great job on the song. He was like, but you were telling me on the phone the night before that your voice was going because of the weather and stuff. He was like, you probably should have probably lowered it just a little. And I was like, exactly, because that's what I was thinking too, you know, whenever I was performing. But it's always better to get people's, to get my friends um, what they think of my performance so I can think next time, you know, I heard people say this about my performance, so I should change, you know, I should think about it more. It's just, it's just interesting to get feedback, positive and negative. I love the negative just as much as the positive. Because the people that love you are going to talk about you, and first of all, the people that hate you are going to talk about you. So, either one, you either way, you'll win. So, what people say about me on the internet, I take um, all in stride because it's. I come from a very sarcastic and um, loving family at the same time, but like I'm very thick-skinned, so it's it's really not going to affect me to an extent. I I really feel for the people that it does, because I, I can't imagine what that would do to you emotionally if it really affects you like that, but. I just, I have a very good family and friend support system and I, I'm very level headed and I, I don't know, I take things, I don't take things how, you know, first of all, people don't know me. So, I mean, they're going to say stuff and they're going to jump to conclusions and judge. And I'm not saying bad about that either because everybody does that as, as people, as human nature. So, um, I, I don't know, I guess I just take it and then I hope if they don't like me, I hope that they watch it more and realize that I'm not the way they think I am, or if I am, then I'm just not the performer for them. <laughs> so. Weird and talk about that. Um, this is kind of funny. Um, my town is flipping out for me about I'm like the local celebrity or whatever. But um, it's kind of weird to have people talk about you or come up to you. Like I, I went to the movies last night, and people were coming up to me, and they they um. They're, they feel weird. They're like, oh my God, I feel like I know you because they watch like clips on the internet that I'm talking or they, inter or they connect with me on a personal level I'm performing. That's kind of weird, but it's cool at the same time. I love when people come up to talk to me. I'm the most talkative person in the world. I will never get tired of it. People say that I am going to, but I promise you, I will never get tired of anybody coming up to me and talking. About, I'm flattered. You know, anything you say, I'm not going to, I'm probably the weirdest person in the world. So all you're going to do is make me feel normal if you think you're weird. So... Before I did the whole American Idol thing, before I'm doing this, um, I, am a co I was cocktail waitress at a comedy club, and I have my girlfriends there that I, you know, hung out with, and I worked as a promo girl for Red Bull, which is the coolest job in the world. We just drive around, and you hang out with people, and give them energy, and um, I hung out with my friends. I'm such a friends girl. I, I have to have that. Even if I'm so tired after work, I will still go hang out with my friends, watch a movie, go to the park, go to, um, go, go anywhere, but I have to have my friends, like I have to hang out with them, that keeps me sane, you know, through every day, because even though my jobs are fun, they are also jobs, so waitressing isn't the funnest job in the world. My friends and family are the most important thing to me just because it's what keeps me sane, it's what keeps me level-headed, you know, um, 
people think, you know, when you get all these compliments thrown at you and people, all of a sudden, you know, people know your name, that it's going to change you. I don't think that, that for personally me, I don't think I will ever change like that. And um, I know for a fact my friends and family will knock me right off that high horse if that ever does happen, which I hope they would, but I don't think that's ever going to be a problem for me. I cannot imagine doing anything else rather than performing in some way. I... I grew up in, in junior high, you know, high school doing, you know, musicals and, and um, you know, choir and everything. And I, I enjoy every aspect from doing my whole state competitions, like the classical stuff, to performing, you know, Vision of Love and Whitney Houston songs at the talent shows. I, it's just the, the highest compliment that I get to do this show. It's just such an honor. I cannot even describe to you how much... And it's cool because so much exposure that I, I, you know, I might actually get to do what I want to do for the rest of my life. And a lot of people don't get to do that. I mean, there's so many people trying to make it in this business. Because I lived in L.A. for a little bit, and that whole city is full of people that's trying to make it. And to actually have a glimpse of, you know, maybe, just maybe, I'll get to do. I'll get to be, you know, what I want to be, and I'll get to do what I want to do. That's just, that's just the coolest thing ever. I had dreams since I was a little girl that I wanted to be on the Grammys or some award show and sing on there. Um, and I, oh, if that could happen, that'd be so cool. Um, yeah, I've always wanted to, because you know, like Madonna, like everybody's at the award shows and to be able to perform for people in the industry, you know, where you want to be, for people that you've looked up to since you were little, oh, that's the highest, just highest of the highs that you could ever, like rush, that's the biggest rush probably I've ever wanted to accomplish. Nothing's really changed with my auditions or performances. I feel if I've made it this far and I can do it, then why change something? I don't, I'm not the girl that, I'm not like, oh, I'm about to perform, I have to have honey and all this stuff in my throat to make me relaxed. I, I don't know, I just, I mean, and of course, you know, that does help, I'm not like saying, you know, anything to those people that, you know, have to have that or something, but it's just, I don't feel I need to change anything that, you know, with my auditioning or performing in general. I just get out there and I do what I love. I just, I sing and I, I put on a show and that's, I, I'm, I'm not going to change anything that I'm doing um, just because I'm advancing more. I feel that would be stupid because I've made it so far to, have ch to change something would be asinine. So, I, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not going to change anything. I don't think I'll ever, I don't think I'm actually going to have to miss the small town life. Even coming back to my town, people are, you know, saying, oh, I saw you on TV and everything, but I'm just the average Kelly here. I'm not anything special here. I mean, of course, they're like, you know, I saw you on TV and, you know, that was cool. But here in Burleson, I'm still Kelly Clarkson that showed up to high school in her pajamas rolling out of bed, <laughs> coming late. You know, I'm still the same dorky little weird girl <laughs> that grew up here. I love music because every, everybody has their own passions, but music, everybody loves music, no matter what it is. You like rock and roll, you like alternative, you like pop, you like R&B. Everybody has their own style of music that they absolutely love. Everybody, music never dies, you know, it's not like something that, um, it's always something that grows, like uh, music, that it always evolves, it never dies down. Like, I think that's the one thing I truly love about music is that everybody has their own shtick with it. No matter what you, what kind of type of music you enjoy, there's, everybody loves it. To see Sarah McLaughlin perform Angel, that song off of City of Angels, I, the, just the words and the way the music go, you know, the, the instruments, everything just touches me. And to know that I can do that for people and to know that music does that for people. You know, unless it doesn't have to be the whole wah wah mood. It can be the happy, you know, the, the jumping up and down, you know, Aerosmith songs, you know. I, I, it just, I, I am so lucky to be, I'm, I'm blessed by God that I'm lucky that I can perform and do this for people and for myself. I mean, even when I sing a song, sometimes I get a little teary eyed, you know, performing songs like that because music is so touching. To me, an American Idol is someone that can connect with everyone. You know, someone that 
um, young, old, middle-aged, teenagers, um, everyone can connect with, everyone can, you know, go to their performance at concerts, you know, there's all types of different people there. Um, someone that they can connect with, like, on a real basis. Like, nobody wants another, you know, nobody wants a fake person. Nobody wants someone that puts on a show, like, in their life. Of course, they put on a show, of course, but not on their personality. You know, they want to see you. They want to, I, I want to see. That's what I want, I want to be. Um, but an American Idol should be real. They should be um, unique, you know, that they stand out. And that's why they're an American Idol. Um, they should be outstanding with, you know, their performance level, you know, be able to interact with the crowd, be able to touch them with a ballad, you know, with their pipes, with their soft notes, with... Um, and I think that's one of the most powerful things about Justin, by the way. He knows how to captivate people w by making them listen to him, not necessarily having to sing loud, you know, he sings soft, making them listen to them. And that's, that's another thing, you learn things from people at the competitions. You learn, like I, I've learned a lot from him just by how he makes, you know, you don't have to sing a certain way just so people, because of course a ballad is great and people love it, it's always gonna be around. But at the same time in the ballad, you don't have to blow the whole time, you know. You can, you can be soft and have people listen, you know, make them listen to you, make them kind of connect. After the competition has been whittled down from the 10,000 to the 120 to the 45, the 30, the 10, I'm thinking, you know, every one of us are thinking, we were all talking about it this past week, um, you know, maybe, just maybe, you know, I could maybe win this, you know, or maybe I could be one of the top ones. And, I mean, I'm already one of the top ones, which is such an honor already, you know, to receive such support from the American public. Um, but... You know, it's always going to be in your head, like, you know, what if, oh my God, that'd be cool, you know, to be the first, like, American Idol, like, uh, as in the TV show. That would, that would be, that would be the ultimate, probably cool, but, I mean, I'm happy where I'm at right now. I'm, I'm thrilled that I made it this far. I'm blessed. I thank God every day for allowing me to have this opportunity. Um, but, of course, people are, you know, me and Justin and AJ, you know, we've already talked, you know, wow, I can't believe we made it this far, you know, like, I wonder, you know, what it's going to be like the rest of the way. I wonder if I will advance. I'm going to just take it day by day, I'm, you know, performance by performance. I'm going to see how it goes. I'm not going to say I think I won't. I'm not going to say I think I will um, make it to the top, you know, three or maybe the American Idol. I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to take it one breath at a time, <laughs> one song at a time.